Hi, my name is Sharon Willis and I'm an Open Access Manager here at Wiley within the Open Research team. So here is a presentation about your profile that was shared as part of an Open Research workshops in 2020 to several UK universities in partnership with the UK Reproducibility Network. So today I'll be talking further on how adopting open practices and publishing open access can help to amplify your research and work and help to build your profile. So I'll be covering why you should adopt open research practices. What are the benefits of publishing open access in terms of citations and usage impact, as well as how open research can be beneficial for your career. But before we start, I'd just like to ask how many people have published their most recent paper as open access? So to kind of kick us off, this is Rick Anderson. Um, he's an Associate Dean in the J. Willard Marriott Library at the University of Utah and a blogger. So he writes in an appeal for researchers to engage in the debate on open access. As an author, I would imagine, I would imagine that it's tempting to look at all the noise and controversy that currently characterises the scholarly communication ecosystem and say to yourself, screw this. I'm just going to put my head down and do my research and publish it the way I always have. I'm a, I'm a biologist or sociologist or engineer or historian, whichever your subject area is. And this looks like a fight between the librarian and the publishers. Let them do their work and I'll do mine. So let's kind of explore the reasons for engaging in Rick's debate and also for adopting open practices and publishing open access. So this is Heather Pivovar, a researcher and open access advocate. She has a bachelor's and master's degree from MIT in electrical engineering, 10 years of experience as a software engineer and a PhD in biomedical informatics. Heather and her colleagues published a study a couple of years ago in PAJ examining the state of open access, a large scale analysis of the prevalence and impact of open access articles in order to try and better understand how much of the literature out there is being published as open access and if there is any advantage to publishing articles as open access. So they looked at three samples, each using 100,000 articles and found that almost 28% of articles published are open access. So these are in DOI assigned journal articles using the Crossref DOI. There are other estimates and analysis out there, such as the publishing marketing reports from Simba, which seem to corroborate that around a third of all articles being published by researchers globally are being published as open access. And in fact, just recently, Dimensions published a blog post showing that in 2020, open access publications represented about 34% of what was published. So it seems there is a consensus on how much open access articles represent of the total research output. But is there any impact of publishing open access for researchers? So firstly, if we examine the so-called open access citation advantage, Heather and our colleagues examined that in that same study and found that papers that are freely available, so not behind a paywall, on average receive about 18% more citations, and that's taking into account the subject area as well as the age of the article. There is lots of literature out there on the open access citation advantage and as publishers this is something we're also interested in. So recently Springer Nature published an article that suggests that open access articles are cited up to one and a half times more frequently than similar subscription articles. This is similar to some of the early findings we have on data available here at Wiley. Comparing open access to subscription articles we found that open access articles are cited about twice as often as subscription articles. So increasingly, we are seeing that this suggested citation advantage does exist in open access articles. But does this affect usage and downloads as well? So the Royal Society of Chemistry analysed some of their data and found that articles that are published open access are downloaded 97% more often than subscription articles. Being able to download articles more freely is likely to increase the reach of each article and may help drive that citation advantage as well. Another estimate from the publisher Springer Nature, which includes to attempts to control for selection bias, for example, that authors choose open access for their most significant work, 
suggest that the usage of open access articles is approximately one and a half times higher, indicating likely enhanced discovery resulting in part from greater sharing of these articles. Something we also see at Wiley is when we transition our subscription titles to become open access journals, is the positive effect that this has on usage as well. In the year of the flip, we see around a 97% increase in downloads to the journal as a whole when compared to the year prior when it was a subscription journal and as such behind a paywall. So it appears that there is a positive impact on citations and usage, but what about careers? So this is Florian Markovets, senior group leader at the Cancer Research UK Cambridge Institute. He wrote an article titled Five Selfish Reasons to Work Reproducibility. And reason number five is reproducibility helps to build your reputation. So he says that for several years, we've made our data code and analysis available as an experiment package on Bioconductor. When I came up for tenure, I cited all of these packages as research output of my lab. Generally, making your analysis available in this way will help you to build a reputation for being an honest and careful researcher. Should there ever be a problem with one of your papers, you will be in a very good position to defend yourself and to show that you reported everything in good faith. So adopting open research practices such as data sharing or publishing open access is also increasingly being recognised and rewarded for in universities. More and more universities are making public statements to help promote the benefits of openness and saying that these practices will be valued in promotion decisions as well as recruitment. So here we've highlighted just a couple of universities that have made statements on this, such as Loughborough and UCL, but it's become increasingly common to do so with across institutions within the UK. So open research isn't just the future, it is very much the here and now. This holds true for researchers in the varying ways to make research open or publish open access. But also for publishers, we're here to help support open research initiatives and help researchers with the open choices they wish to make. For example, many, like many publishers, Wiley has a tool to help you match your journal choices with what you want and what, with what your funders or universities require. So this one enables you to make journal choices by telling you the journal policies on gold open access, so that paid open access, green open access, which is a self-archiving version of open access, data sharing, whether the journal um, uses preprints or if it has an ORCID ID requirement. So before we'd end, I'd like to ask what your thoughts and opinions are on open access and other open research practices.